So I just finished mowing my backyard and I found this amazing moss growing naturally. And I was like, oh my goodness, what is this? I want to sleep on it. It's so soft. Anyway, had to get it, had to do a revamp of Frederick's Palace. And anyway, intro please. This is the terrarium I revamped last weekend. This contains two tiny whistling tree frog froglets. Now all I did was added some more greenery, some mosses, some small plants, new piece of bark, and it looks amazing. This will be perfect for them for the next couple of months until they move into something a lot larger. Now this is the terrarium we're gonna be revamping today. This is Frederick's palace. Now I think you can see him through the, oh man, this thing needs a clean, but there he is. Frederick the Whistling Tree Frog, absolute OG. Saw Godzilla outside, had to get a quick snapshot of him. It's autumn in Christchurch, still cold, but he was out looking illustrious as ever. Look at him, gorgeous Northland Green Gecko. Back to the terrarium. So it definitely needs a clean, it needs a clean out. We're gonna add that massive bit of moss that I discovered in my backyard. We're gonna clean it, we're gonna add some greenery, Oh, walking into the garage, obviously needed some stuff, but comment below if you've got projects or reptile projects terrariums that you've got to get to at some point in this year. These two, don't know when I'll get to them, but I'll get to them at some point. So I got the tools out, got everything I needed, and got stuck into it. Had to check out the Cunningham Skinks. That's me, I'm Max. Don't judge me for that terrible uh, singlet I'm wearing. Uh, I'm basically white trash, but anyway, got stuck into it. This perfect piece of moss i don't know what species it is i don't know the name but it came off so easily like a perfect little moss pancake i ripped it off and that's exactly how it will go in the terrarium this piece this large chunk i got enough that i could play with but otherwise the air surrounding area just made sure that it would go in checked everything and here it is the perfect little pancake godzilla is always eyeballing me honestly all right, so to get started, we're gonna have to take everything out, obviously. We're gonna have to take out the old plants. This, you know, duckweed is like gold, liquid gold around here, so I made sure I kept that little bit of wood with duckweed on it. Here he is, here's Frederick, honestly. Look at that little guy. Look at that little rascal, grown so well. He started as a tadpole. Such a soft spot for this little guy. So this piece of moss, he's gonna sit in there for now until I get everything ready, but he'll be fine, he'll love it. So like I said, pulling everything out, pulling all the old plants. I decided not to keep everything that was in there. One of the plants was looking awfully sad, so I replanted it outside, and now I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. I wanna keep the pebble look in there. I wanna keep that natural pool of water in there. Oh, sorry, Frederick, you got to go. Putting the in, in the actual piece of moss was easy. It was just gonna sit on top and naturally root down into the pebbles. And because moss doesn't need direct sunlight. I think it's perfect for a terrarium that's not gonna be in direct sunlight. In fact, it'll have indirect sunlight, which I think will be a good environment for it to flourish. This ecosystem will be perfect. I opted to keep the big, large fern plant that I originally had in there because it was growing well. Once again, sorry guys, I don't know the name, but I opted to keep it in there. And here I am being really, really cryptic with the duckweed, putting it back in his little pool but I gave his little pool a little clean. Now tree frogs don't need a lot of water, they just need a body of water or little pool. And Frederick, honestly, if he ever goes in there, he just sits in there for a couple of seconds or minutes and he's out of there straight away. So let's check this out. After adding some key elements, Frederick looked chuffed. He knew that his terrarium was getting a makeover. Look at him, he's staring at it, thinking like, oh man, that is a dope crib. Anyway, I had to get some extra bits and bobs from the garden. Now, controversial, a lot of people are against picking, I guess, plants and vegetation and bark and leaves from the garden, from the wild, because of pesticides. My garden is pesticide-free. Yes, there's a possibility of disease and fungus and things like that, but 
Look, in my experience, I've never had issues. I've never had issues with chytrid, uh, which is the uh, disease that frogs get, especially in New Zealand. So I risk it. My garden's pesticide free. It's really natural. I make sure I'm careful. Usually I do quarantine these ve this vegetation, but I thought I'd be a bit risky and take the risk here. Anyway, thought I'd get a little pebble in there, larger pebble, just to add an element to his little beach that I created. Obviously, I need some critters in there. I need some isopods, some slaters to act as cleanup crew. So I rustled it around and found three. Once again, I am a huge advocate for wild caught bugs for my animals. That includes flies, crickets, moths, anything that they're gonna eat in the wild. They are naturally gut loaded. But obviously, once again, controversial statement. A lot of people would obviously opt against that. You don't have to do that. I'm not saying you do. Here's Frederick, let's get him in there. The most exciting part is once it's all done, you've got it all ready to go, is getting that little guy in there. Now he will explore. I've always found with frogs, when you put them in a new environment, they will spend the first couple of hours actually just exploring and being out in the open. And when with whistling tree frogs, then being nocturnal, after a few hours, they will disappear. They will hide. His favorite spot will be under the leaf litter or deep in the green or under the, under the long leaves. But we'll see, we'll see. But otherwise, this is it. This is Frederick's makeover. These terrariums are super easy to make. I've got the full terrarium when I first started this little sucker about six months ago. But look, have fun. Uh, you can keep small frogs, froglets in these terrariums. It's not a long-term home. That's my disclaimer. They will need to go in something much larger and much taller. But it's a creative option for the more experienced keepers and it's got microclimates in there and a fantastic ecosystem for him and he's flourishing he's growing well he's on his own it's not overcrowded and he gets plenty of food Otherwise guys, this is Figgy for attention. I hope you enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for the next one.